Well, it must have broken Jonas's heart to write that word, mister. Yeah. You wouldn't say that Jonas, old Jojo, really likes Larry. No, you would say. He'd sooner eat one of Larry's eyes out as he would at Sherry. Yeah. Well, he certainly chose a fine time to get us up out of that. And me with tickets to the opening game. You'll be there. Larry won't be on time, and old Jojo will dynamite the building. Here's the Jojo, the dog-faced boy. Gentlemen, Mr. Jonas breaks the ritual. Raz, Raz, Raz Jojo. In the words of the immortal poet, I observe, thus shines a good deed in a naughty world. What immortal poet? Shakespeare. What paper's he on? Paper. He's a fullback on Notre Dame. Larry, you're almost on time. Mr. Doyle, of course you know you're Mr. today. Well, where's the tin cup? The other fellow looks all right. I didn't catch him in the door, and I haven't got a mother-in-law. Jojo will break the other one for no, you. I burned it. Hot gin? No, a furnace. I was turning on a pilot light. It seems there was God. <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. Is Jonas going through with this presentation? Pardon me, gentlemen. One hour late and he walks right in on the buses. Where is that Doyle? Get him for me. Here I am, Chief. My dear boy, congratulations. This is the secretary to the police commissioner. The new secretary. Uh, uh, congratulations, sir. Sure, and uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, the Whistler. Uh, T. Fulton Whistler. Whitler? Whistler. When you are ready, Mr. Doyle. On behalf of the police commissioner, P. Blenheim Durkin. I thought his name was just plain Pete Durkin. Since when did he start parting his name in the middle? Cut it, Doyle. Send in the photographer. On behalf of our commissioner, I'm here to thank Mr. Lawrence Doyle for his highly commendable work in solving the recent Upshaw murder case. I especially extol his zeal, efficiency, repertorial sagacity, and civic spirit. Mr. Doyle, though this is by proxy, the commission and the police department shake your hand. That's not fair, you read it. I thank you very much, Mr. Whitler. No, Whistler. So sorry. That's fine, that's fine. Will Wheat's done. Come in here. Now then, you fellas. Take a look at a real newspaper man. Larry, the paper is proud of you. Send for me, Keith. That was yesterday's. I just got your mess. Fine, then get this one. Take a shot at Doyle, and then get your check and get out of this office. You're through. Yeah, yes, Chief. Get it. Yes. Wait a minute. Where's the gun? Oh, I have found my soul the gift. Where did I put it? Oh, thank you very much. The physical token of the commissioner's esteem. All right, Larry. Get the gun up a little higher. All right, hold it. Get that back as fast as you can. That's Chief. Put a rush on it. Yes. What about my job? What's the matter with it? Nothing. I like it. Thank you. Give me a half column with that cut for tonight's final. Get it? Okay, Chief. Well, what are you waiting for? Get out. Mr. Whistler, do you have to go? Oh, no, 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 no. I see. Well, we won't forget you in our story. We'll stress the cooperation shown us and the healthy conditions existing between the... Uh, Newspaper down and police official down. And my best wishes to the inspector? Yes, indeed. Well, I guess the recreation hour is over with. Well, uh, my personal felicitations upon your marvelous work. As a matter of fact, you've been doing so many wonderful things. Oh, thanks. But any of the boys could have done it. I just got the breaks, that's all. Oh, I, I'm not surprised at your modesty. Oh, thank you, Mr. Whittier. Whistler. Well, Chief? I guess I had you all wrong. I thought you were tough. You're not. Who put your ways to this? You. That crack you made about me being a good newspaper man. Just a crack. Oh. You didn't take it seriously. No. Don't. I won't. Fine. You're good when you're good. That's all. This Upshaw case, all right. But what about a couple of others? I brought them in, didn't I? After I wet-nursed you, I'm giving you the breaks. I see. Maybe you should have fired me. Maybe I should have. And maybe I will someday. Meantime, I'm trying to give you a break, Mr. Doyle. 
It's a nifty gun. Someday I'm going to use it. That your man pick? Yeah. I'm going to get me a city editor. Wait a minute. No speeches with this. The boss handed me this to hand to you. Don't open it in here. A good story might hop out. And I'd have to get a good man to write it. It's another joke. A bonus. As long as you live, don't ever give any credit to anybody for anything. Might keep you awake nights. And I've got the keys to 15 different cities. And I've got the day off. Present from JoJo? No, I'm just taking it. So let's see that gun. Hmm. Special 45. Well, you might as well be armed right. Here's my contribution. And here's mine. Say, what do you think we could get on this gun? What do you mean, we? You think I'd pawn this token of esteem from T. Whittier Whiffletree? Well, we always split, don't we? This time we don't have to. The Upshaw case gave us this. Just what is it? I wouldn't be any authority. It says that the government will redeem it for fifty dollars. Hmm. When? Now. Onward, brave musketeers! Suggest I do. Resign. You three, the office, tomorrow morning, on time and sober. Or a bad newspaper man will show you how to run one without you. And that goes. Okay. Uh, you get my point? Yes. And your resignation. And this time, Mr. Doyle, that goes. You have done me a favor. When you want another, call on me. And try and get it. What's the damage? Everything's paid but the last two rounds. Okay, here you are. Everything's even. Thank you, Mr. Doyle. Grab a cab, pick up my bag, and I'm on my way. Hey, Faust coming with me? Sure. Let's go. If I had my wife to wear... Hey, 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 Come 
Where are you going? Anywhere this will take me. Come on. <laughs> if I had a Time to get up. Boss, we getting into St. Louis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Huh? St. Louis? Yes, sir. St. Louis, Missouri. What for? What for what? You mean my ticket to read St. Louis? Yes, sir. Where'd all this junk come from? Well, that come aboard with you last night in Chicago. I see. Well, look, uh, was I uh, was I alone? Oh no. The bridal party was with me. I see. Bridal party? Surely you remember. No. I drew a blank. Bridal party. Well, here we are. Yeah. We'll have to break a dollar. Oh, that's all right, boss. You took care of me last night. I give up. Is the little lady going to meet you? I don't know. Little lady? Oh, boss. You can't fool me. I know she was coming to St. Louis to get married. I am, huh? Yes, sir. That fixes everything up just dandy. Oh, no! Oh. Oh. Yeah, I remember. Well, I guess I won't need this anymore. St. Louis. Bridal party. Little, oh. Hey, hey. son. Howdy. Hi, buddy. Where's the closest place a fella can go and get something for, uh, that? You mean that? Yeah, that. Okay, buddy. What'll it be, lady? Oh, a, a, a cup of coffee and some donuts. And you? Uh, uh, donuts and coffee. <clears throat> Check. Twenty cents? Yeah, that's right. Ten cents for coffee? It's never more than a nickel. Well, it's ten here. You can get them any place for a nickel. Lady, we get five cents straight, three for 15. I serve them, you wet them, and that's the check. Well, look, all I have is a nickel and five pennies. Honestly, it is. Lady, if I let you talk me out of this, I'll have to pay the difference. Well, don't you believe me? With all the gags they play on me, I don't believe nobody. Hey, buddy, check. And, uh... Thanks. Say, waiter, you got any dishes you'd like wash? <laughs> Forget it. That won't be necessary. I can tell a lady when I see one. Oh, thanks. Here. No, 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 no. This is on the house. I can just meet it. And two cents tax. That's what I say, I can just meet it. Uh, 
Is this name uh, Weston? Yes. That'll be uh, 56 cents. I'd like to send a collect. What's your name? Uh, any identification? No, but it, it's to my mother. I know, miss, but uh, we don't know your mother, and I can't accept it. You can't? Well, that's all right. Thanks just the same. Look, isn't there something I can do? No, thank you. Well, now, don't get me wrong. I'm just not interested. That's telling me. <laughs> hey, where do you think you're going? When you see fellows like that, you wish you were a judge. Anyone hurt? No. No. But how come you let that fella get away? I whistled, didn't I? Officer, everything is all right. Everything isn't all right. That fella... That fella didn't give me an argument. He went right ahead. That's what burns me. Would you and the lady like to go to the station and make a complaint? We well, certainly oh, no. would. Please well, you nearly got killed. You just step off the curb. What kind of a time? Whoa, whoa. Whoa, now. Don't you know that you can never win an argument with a wife? Yeah, but sometimes a good smack does her good. <coughs> Well, if you carry across the next street, you might throw yourself under another car. I appreciate very much what you did, but now I wish you'd go away and leave me alone. You can't be trusted out alone. You can tell that traffic officer how to handle his job, but don't give me any of your advice. That was funny that Mrs. Stuff, wasn't it? No. I thought it was. Oh, you. You. You know you're prettier than ever when you're mad. You will either go away and leave me alone, or I'll call the policeman and tell him that you're annoying me. Would you do that? Yes. I believe you would have that. Well, so long. Miss me? <laughs> <laughs> I love your laugh. Is this going to keep up all day? Why not? I don't know what to do with you. I don't know what to do with you. Come on. You know, you're not fooling me a bit. You haven't any more place to go than a rabbit, neither have I. You're broke and I'm broke. But I'm not going to let you go till I'm sure you're all right. Oh, don't worry about me. Well, I have to. Ever since that car missed you and you threw yourself in my arms. I did not. Oh, look that way to me. Well, you grabbed me. Could I help that? No, I suppose not. But you didn't have to kiss me as a reward for saving your life. What? Well, you didn't think about it. It's okay. It'd be nice if you had, though. But on the level, you are up against it, aren't you? So am I. Now, look, if you're willing to take a chance, I can get us both out of a jam. Just what do you mean by taking a chance? Figure there are some men in this world that know a decent girl when they see one. Then forget all those others and focus on me. Now, there you are, and here I am. We have one bag between us. That bag will get us into a good hotel. Now, please, please, don't get me wrong. I'll see that you get a good room, a good meal, Good sleep, and incidentally, I'll get a little shut-eye myself, because I won't have to be worrying about you. What do you say? Well, here comes an officer. Coming along with me, or are you going to turn me in? Nice day, officer. What's nice about it? Well, I think it's a lovely day. Nothing like picking the best, huh? I keep smiling, keep on looking happy. 
And if I start getting in wrong, you laugh. That'll kill the clerk. Whatever I do, you play straight for me. We'll get all set. I have something to eat, and tomorrow's another day. You will trust me, don't you? I trust you. That's great. Well, come on. Turn on that smile. That's it. Come on. How do you do? How do you do? Uh, now I can give you something very nice on the third floor with tub and shower for ten dollars. You're not talking my language. What did the president have last time he stopped here? Perhaps I'd better call the manager. Yes, would you? Shelly. Play straight, place. Uh, Mr. Clark, our manager, Mr. and Mrs. Doyle. Oh, uh, how do you do, Mrs. Doyle? Hello. Uh, how do you do, Mr. Doyle? Mr. Clark? Now, uh, what can I do for you? Well, what we really wanted was the honeymoon suite if it's vacant. Oh, honeymooners, eh? Yes, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> that's $35 a day, Mr. Doyle. It's all right. That's perfectly all right. Mrs. Doyle insisted upon coming here, and at least I'm starting in right. Whatever Mrs. Doyle wants, I want. Isn't that right, dear? My, that's <laughs> wonderful. Uh, uh, Mr. Shaw, the keys to 910. Boy, front. I'll conduct you to the suite personally. Oh, thank you. Just a moment, Mr. Clark. I'm expecting a very, very important wire. Will you phone over to the railroad station and have them forward it over here, please? Yeah. Certainly. Thanks. Uh, now, children, come with me. Listen, Mr. Clark, nice dear. Yeah. <laughs> These bridegrooms get on my nerves. Maybe when you get one, he won't. Hmm. Wise guy, huh? Like this? Oh, it's fine. You ought to. The president did. Oh, we do, don't we, dear? <laughs> She's a little tired. A good kid, but moody. Now, don't you hesitate to ask me for anything you desire. <laughs> I won't. <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. Doyle. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye, Mrs. Doyle. Here you are, sir. Oh, yes, so we are. Uh, is there anything else, sir? Hmm? Oh, boy. Hurry. Well, did I or did I not put that one over? You did. I told you I would. You told me I could trust you, and I believed you. Oh, kid, this is the way to do it. Make them think we're important people. Well, I prefer nice people. We are. I kept my bargain. I played straight. And now I'll go quietly, and you can explain your wife's going as glibly as you did her coming here. Oh, now, look, kids, you can't do this. I wasn't fooling you. I meant everything I said. I thought you understood. I told you there'd be no... Oh, now, look. There's your room, and there's mine, and here's your key. Well, you couldn't be as safe anywhere in the world as you are right here. Miss me? Which key is mine? Hello. Is Mr. Clark in the office? Hello, Mr. Clark? Mr. Doyle? Oh, no, no, no. Everything is fine, yes. No, I want to order some lunch. Oh, uh, some pheasant, I think. Oh, Mr. Clark, that's too bad. No pheasant, dear. Now, she says grouse, then. Yes, grouse. Uh-huh. And some wine. Oh, I should say two bottles. Oh, it really doesn't matter, Mr. Clark. I'll leave the vintage to you. Thank you. Whew. I don't think I've ever been so hungry in all my life. <laughs> I got that at the station. You looked all in. I was. Do you know, I couldn't even pay my check. No. If it hadn't been for that waiter, I, I don't know what I'd have done. He trusted me for 20 cents. He did say that fellow's all right. You'd never know it by looking at him. I'm going to see that he gets that 20 cents. No, I'll take care of that. No, 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 I'll do it. I'm your business manager. <laughs> all right. Now, here's the idea. We haven't a thing to worry about. I've wired my old paper for $200. That's the wire sent from the station. 
That ought to be here tomorrow at the latest. I really ought to get it tonight. Then we pay our bill here and we're all set. How's that, Ann? Say, how'd you know my name was Ann? Did I hit it? Well, what do you... Now, how do you suppose... It... Oh, I know. You look like an Ann. Well, just what do Ann's look like? <laughs> Well, just like you. <laughs> oh, Mr. Clark. Just came in for Mr. Doyle. You know, that millionaire bridegroom up in 910. Shall I send it up to him? I'll deliver it myself. Mr. Doyle, eh? Why, it's easy. Of course, Larry Doyle doesn't mean anything to you, but any good newspaper knows me. I'll buy tomorrow. There you are. Something happening already. Oh, hello, Mr. Clark. Come right in. It's Mr. Clark here. How do you do, Mr. Clark? Hello there, Mr. Doyle. Oh, thank you. Well, well, what do you think of that? A wire for us. The telegram was for you. Oh, was it? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Good news? Hmm? Oh, yes, marvelous. <laughs> Just a joke. <laughs> Another comedy wire for the honeymoon couple. <laughs> I don't know how they ever knew we were stopping here. <laughs> Could I see you in the hall for just a minute? Huh? Oh, yes, certainly. <laughs> Excuse us, dear. <laughs> Let's see, Mr. Clark. That line of talk you gave me was good. I don't know what your game is, and I don't care, but you've involved me. Now, I could put you out, but that won't do me any good. So I'll take a gamble. I'll give you just 24 hours to settle up your bill, or I'll call the police. Oh, thanks very much, Mr. Clark. Goodbye, Mr. Clark. <laughs> he killed me. <laughs> what did he want? Oh, just another joke. He wanted me to invest money in a new chain of hotels. <laughs> what was in that wire? Uh, oh, the wire. Oh, <laughs> just a gag. It's kind of funny, though, but it's... Uh, well, you know, you can't read it to a girl. It's kind of, uh, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Here's a laugh from Larry Doyle, St. Louis. He's flattening the jam and wires me for 200. Well, what are you going to do? I've done it. I wired him nothing doing that I don't even know him. But he's in a jam. He needn't yell to me. I'm through with him. I just thought you boys might be interested, that's all. <laughs> this kid's in a jam. How much money you fellows got? I haven't got any money, but I got an idea. What is it? <laughs> Oh, babies be hot for me tonight. Can you use them? I made them. Well, come on. Well, the grouse was delicious, and I noticed that you enjoyed the wine. What do we do next, Mr. Business Manager? Say, hey, you're not even listening to me. I've got it. I've got it. He always works the same way. He pulls off a job and then calls up the district attorney in the newspapers and laughs at him. He's just pulled his most sensational job and he's laughing at them all right now. Who in the world are you talking about? The eel. There it is. Read it. Oh, boy, is this up my alley. Here's where I go to work. I'm on my way to the news office. Keep your breath till I get back. Hello. Listen, I just told the district attorney where he stands. Now I'll tell you. You're editing the paper. We're doing everything we can, sir. I've got everybody out covering the case. As usual, he left no clues. You get the eel, or I'll get another managing editor. What a piece of luck I am for you. Who are you? Harry Doyle, the best newspaper man either side of the Rockies. Get out of here. 
Don't you want to catch a eel? Yeah. All right, you're looking at the original eel catcher. Larry Doyle, the one and only. Why, you know me, Larry Doyle, Chicago Record. Oh, I know what you're thinking. You think I'm a lot of... I do. You think I'm a bluff, a fake. Right. All right, I'll prove it. I got my press card right here. Anybody knows me. If you're a managing editor, you ought to... Oh, I'm afraid I haven't got it. You see, a bunch of the fellow we... Uh, uh, that last night in Chicago. Get out of here, or I... Are you I... trying to kick me out, or you wouldn't do that? You'd check out the best little newspaper man you ever took a boot at. Besides, you'd lose the boot and the opportunity of your life. I'm not going to let you do it. I'm going to call up my boss and be identified. Charges reversed. Oh, certainly. Get Jordan for me. I want to talk to Jonas, Chicago Record. I don't care where you've looked. Get him. Why, of course, charges reversed. You, Errol, look in every gin mill, pool hall, dance hall, the river anywhere. And when you find him, tell him to go down to Trocadero and see if he can pick up anything on the eel. Trocadero, huh? Hello. Hello, Jonas. It's Larry Doyle. Yeah, I'm talking to Marvin, St. Louis News. Yeah, big story's popped, and I'm telling him I'm the boy to handle it. He doesn't believe I'm Larry Doyle. Can you imagine that? Yeah, well, you put him straight. Sure, I'll fix it for you. Put Marvin on. Thanks. There you are. That's my boss. This is Marvin. Give me the lowdown. Sure. He's a fake. If I were you, I'd turn him over to the police. He's lying. Because the real Larry's sitting here in my office right now. Hey. Well, he told you, didn't he? He sure did. That was my boss. Your boss says you're a fake and a liar. The real Larry Doyle is sitting in his office right now. Quit kidding. Why, it must be a rip. I'm Larry Doyle honest. Get out of here before you tell me your dame and run you. And here's one city editor you can't put anything over on. All right. You don't believe I'm Larry Doyle? Well, the next time I come in, I'll have the story. Maybe you'll believe that, Mr. Editor. The charges on that call were $6.60. Is everything all right? Said, listen, I talked to Marvin, the managing editor of the news, for about 15 minutes, told him I was Larry Doyle, and he put me on the payroll. Oh, I'm riding on top of the world again. Oh, I'm so glad, Larry. Riding on top of the world again. Larry, hmm. come here. Yes, ma'am. Look me straight in the eye. Are you lying to me? Yeah. I lost out. You see, Ann, my old boss let me down. I called him, told him they didn't believe I was Larry Doyle. He said he'd fix it. He did. He told him I was a fake. <laughs> kind of funny. It's a shame. It's just a shame. It's all in the brakes, but I'm not licked yet. I'll show him, and I'll show that Jonas, too. Wait a minute. I'll go. It might be Mr. Clark. Thank you. Thank you. Another wire for you, Larry. Yeah, I know it's from Jonas, and I don't want it. Well, look, here's fifty dollars. Yeah, sure. What? What? Well, what does this mean? Huh. Sorry, couldn't do better. The bones went cold at fifty. Regards, Waylon, Weeks, and Dunn. Now, can you imagine pals like that? Hello? Hello? If this hotel can scrape up $50, get it together because I'm coming right down. It's always a mistake to let a newspaper man get his hand on $50. I told you something to break. Well, where are you going? I'll to spend my inheritance. Money drives me crazy. What's all this? Larry, they're beautiful. Put those things down, boys. You shouldn't have done it. Rather I hadn't? No. Oh, boy. Thank you, sir. The bill is paid. The manager's apologizing. We've got two days' credit. You're a sweet kid. And we're broke again. That's it. Money. Money. Now, where can we get a hold of some money? I've got it.
Anne, do you know where there's a good pawn shop? I should. Everything I own is there. What time's it closed? Larry! <laughs> How much do you think they'll give you on it? As little as possible. I do. How much? What do you want? Fifty bucks. Fifteen. Forty. Twenty. Best I can do. I wouldn't sell it for less than thirty-five. Well, I wouldn't pay more than twenty-five. It's yours. Your money. Thank you. Your ticket. Thank you. We're rich again. Come on. Hello? This is Nate. Yes? I just got a special police 45. Exactly what you're looking for. Thanks. I'll be right down for it. $25. A good gambling place, I make it a hundred. Well, there's a Trocadero. I hear they gamble there. Trocadero? Trocadero. That's the place Marvin spoke of. That's where we'll go. Larry, do you think we should? Listen, where they gamble, they drink. Where they drink, I can gamble. All right. But don't you drink? Certainly not. Maybe one or two. <laughs> I don't know where this place got a reputation for being a live one. Hmm. It is dead tonight, but it's all right with me. Good night. Hmm? Oh. <laughs> hmm. Wait here, I'll get a cab. Story hop right in my lap. Beat it back to the hotel and wait for me. Keep this stuff overnight. Meet me tomorrow at 5.30 and be sure and be there. All right, get going. Attention all cars, a holdup at the Trocadero. Two men killed. Bandit got away in open touring car. Headed west from the Trocadero. Bring him in. That is all. Bronson. car seen turning south on 8th Street. Oh, Larry, are you all right? Lady, lady, have I got a story. Police car 17 reports. Bandit car did not go beyond Elm Avenue on 8th Street. Keep your eyes open. Bronson. But a crazy...
crazy thing to do, Larry. They might have killed you. But they didn't. Look at that stuff. Boy, with a story like this, I'll make Marvin and the news do back handsprings. You stay here, and this time keep your fingers crossed. I'm going with you. No, you stay here. I'll be right back. You'll do nothing of the sort. You're not going to get away again. Where you go, I go. I'm not going to stay up in this room all by myself. I'm going with you. What I say, you're going. Come on. Marvin talking. This is your friend, the eel, talking. I knocked over the trocadero. What? See if you can trace that call on the other wire. Hurry, it's the eel. <laughs> can't you hurry? Can't you hear me? That was the eel. It won't do you any good because you can't. <laughs> Hello. 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 How would you like the eel this time? I haven't enough on my hands. You're going into your dance again. And now you've got a partner. Oh, I'm not a dancer. I'm his wife. Don't bring any of your children in here. I'm bringing the greatest story of the year in here, if you've got sense enough to grab it. He's a much better newspaper man than any you've got on this paper. He's out of his mind. Now get out of here, both of you. All right, I'm going over to the dispatch. They'll know a great story when they hear one. And you'll lose your job. Why, a feature story signed by Larry Doyle will bust this town wide open. But you're not Doyle. All right, supposing I'm not, but I can turn up the eel. Lots of people have fallen down trying to do that. But they haven't seen him. I have. I'd believe anything if I could believe that. I tell you, I've seen him. I could pick him out of a hundred men. Prove it. I will, but first I've got to be on the payroll. All right. I'll take a chance. How much? Never mind, Dan. Oh, no. We're not giving things away. All right, all right. A hundred a week. Get the eel and you'll get a bonus. It's a bet. Now, call up the district attorney. Tell him to get his men over to the Trocadero. We'll be there before they are. Get me Johnson, the district attorney, right away. If you're kidding me, your wife will take you home in a basket. Get the district attorney and make a reputation for yourself. Come on, Ann. Hello, Johnson, the news. Marvin talking. I've got a hot tip on the eel. One of my best men is on his way down to the Trocadero with the dope. This is hot. You will? Right away? Good. His name? Doyle. That's it. Larry Doyle. I hope. Now, this is what we know. Officer O'Brien was killed by the gunman in the car, and the gunman was killed by O'Brien. The bullets found in their respective bodies make us certain of that, right? Right. Now, which officer found the body of Detective Riley? I did. Good. Was the bullet found in the body? Yes, a 45. Good. Now, uh, how did you find it? I mean, uh, which way was it lying? The head that way, the feet this. Now, if the body fell like that, he must have been killed by someone who stood about... Here. Sure. The man in the car. No. The man in the car had a shotgun. Now, just let us suppose that the eel comes out of this door. He has the money. He stops. He hears Riley. He turns and fires and kills him. He steps over to the car. He hands someone in the car the money, and they beat it. Now, let's suppose that just to cover up, the eel starts back into the club. He still has the gun. It's hot. What does he do? Throws it away. Right. He throws it away. Now, where would he throw it? Here it is. What did I tell you? Give it to me. No doubt about it, it's a 45. I tell you, no matter how clever they are, they always leave a clue. Now, gentlemen, you have the gun, you have the bullet. And the fingerprints. Right. Now, all you have to do is find the owner of the gun, and you found the murderer and the eel. Come on, men. We have no time to lose. Larry, it's your gun. $26,000 in cash, me left holding the bag. I find the killer's gun and it turns out to be my own. What a story. What a spot. All right. We're the only ones that know about the money. And as for the gun, that would have the fingerprints of the killer, not yours. That's right. Larry, there's nothing more we can do about it tonight, is there? There certainly is. We can go down to that pawn shop and find out who got the gun. But that's been closed for hours. You know that. Oh, that's right, too. Look, you're all tired out. Why don't you go in and get some sleep? Lie down and get your nerves all straightened out. Well, what about you? You're all in yourself. Oh, I'm all right. Well, I guess you're the business manager now. Here. One time you need it. Thanks. 
You know, I nearly died when you told Marvin you were my wife. Nobody can call me a dancer. <laughs> yes, do you? You better get some sleep yourself. I will. Hey. You're cute, you know that. Good night. Well, what is it? It's about that eel case. Oh. Sit down. I'm a pawnbroker, uh, near that gambling joint where the policemen were killed. Go on. Well, I see by the paper about the gun that killed him, the number and so on. Anyhow, just before the murder, a young fella come in to sell me that same gun. Well, that is interesting. What happened? I wouldn't buy it. Why not? He ain't got no identification. I get suspicious. Take his number, the gun, and his name. Here it is. Larry Doyle. Yeah. Did he have a girl with him? Sure. Uh, Send in Jackson and Kelly right away. There's no doubt about it. We've got a real job on our hands. Right. Come on. Think the money's safe? Oh, sure. It's locked in the cabinet. Larry Doyle? Yes, what is it? The district attorney would like to see you. Okay. I've got to run over to the newspaper office first, and I'll be right over. No. You better come along now. All right, Larry. You run ahead, and I'll wait for you right here. Mm -mm. The district attorney said he'd like to see you, too. You didn't think I was really going to stay here, did you? <laughs> sit down, please. Won't you sit down? Mrs. Doyle? Now, convinced as I am of your analysis of the crime last night, I would like to make sure of some minor details. Which may not seem important to you, but I would like to check up on my deductions. Now, as I remember, your deductions were that Officer O'Brien was killed by the gunman in the car, and that he was killed by O'Brien. Now, the bullets found in the respective bodies make that positively certain, right? Right. Now, there was one thing you overlooked yesterday, something that we now know. Another man drove that murder car away. Find that man and you'll find the eel. Well, isn't that a reasonable supposition? I suppose so. Now, now check me if you see me going wrong. But now, Doyle, it isn't possible, is it, that for the sake of a good story, you might be withholding something that could be construed as, well, not as deductions, but as evidence. A good newspaper man never reveals the source of his information. Right. Now, for the sake of uh, my deductions, suppose you tell us something about your movements yesterday. Where were you from 1 to, say, 1.30 a.m.? Why, I was, uh... You interviewed Marvin at 1.20, right? About that. Where had you been just before you interviewed uh, Marvin? I was, uh... You went to the Commodore Hotel at 1 o'clock and left there at 1.05. Now, that we know. Most this all may seem irrelevant to you, but it has its merits. At least I think so. Now, where were you between the hours of 9 and 12.20? Oh, we went several places. Happen to drop in at the Trocadero? Yes. What time was this? Oh, cut this out. I'm not... Oh, you have charge of the cloakroom, the Trocadero? Yes. Recognize this lady and gentleman? 
Mm-hmm. Where did you see them last? At the Trocadero. I gave this gentleman his hat and coat. Lady with him? Mm-hmm. Gentleman say anything? He remarked to the lady that our joint was a dead one. Lady say anything? She agreed with him. About what time was that? About 12.20. That's all. Thank you. Boss, the district attorney has Doyle down in his office. All right, he knows how to get out. Not today. The DA's putting the screws on him. What for? Oh, I supposed to crab our story? Oh. I see. That holdup occurred about the same time. Suppose it did. Are you accusing me? Of... Fingerprints on the wheel and those of Mr. Doyle found in the hotel room are the same. That's all. I repeat, find the man who drove that car and you'll have the eel. You mean you're charging me with murder? I do. You going to talk? Go on, Larry. Tell him what happened. All right. All this evidence you have is right. But I only did what any good newspaper man would do in the same spot. We don't even know that you are a newspaper man. But we do know that you are not Larry Doyle. What are you trying to do, Johnson? Run my office. Then lay off my paper. What's the deal, Larry? I'm charged with a trocadero murder. Have you gone insane? No, I'm getting smart. First, who is he? What do you mean, who is he? He's not Larry Doyle. Who said so? You did. You kicked him out once when Chicago said he was a fake. What do you want to do, Larry? Get Chicago. Get Jonas again. Hey, that's an idea. Get Jonas to Chicago record. Quick. And remember, it was your own idea. Get it. <laughs> You're not thinking very fast today. Cut out the jokes, Johnson. They're not funny. Yeah, well, this call will be the... Hello? What do you want? Oh, Jonas, Chicago record? Yeah. This is Johnson, District Attorney of St. Louis. An identification. Hello, Jonas. This is Marvin again, the news. About Larry Doyle. Let me talk to him. Hello, Chief. I'm in a spot. If you fall down, I mean, this time is my finish. I got a great story, but it's backed up on me. My only honor is to prove that I'm... Put that district attorney on. Right. Johnson talking. Hello, Johnson. That's Doyle. Larry Doyle. He's a good boy. And you fellas stop kidding him out there. Well, he says you're him. Thanks, Chief. Now are you satisfied? Well, I'm sure he's Doyle, all right. And I'm also sure I'm holding him for murder. Come on, let me in on this. Well, here it is. Besides all this evidence, Doyle was the driver of the murder car. Part of the story. Are you right, Larry? If you'll stick with me. That's good enough for me. We'll crack this story wide open. Come on, kid. No, no. He's going to stay right here. You'd hold up my paper? Well, I've got to handle my end, too, you know. I'm guaranteeing him. If you give me 24 hours, I'll produce eel. No. You won't take my guarantee? No. I see. Well, maybe I don't pack the wallet. Give me Forrest, 6370. If the managing editor can't talk sense to you, maybe the owner can. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, that's all, man. Hello, hold it a minute. Uh, there's no need of calling him in. Oh, yes, he'll tell you things I haven't the heart to. Well, now, gentlemen, we can be reasonable. Do I get 24 hours for Doyle? I'll play with you. Cancel the call. Now, keep your men out of this. Doyle gets a free hand. Are we set? I guess so. What? Yes. Come on, kid. Larry, what was it that man said to you last night when he handed you the bag? We well, said, keep this and meet me tomorrow at 5.30. But that doesn't make sense. No, but this does. Let's get to that pawn shop. No cops will stop us this time. Larry, look. There's your 5.30. I'll redeem this. What's the matter? Can't you read your own handwriting? Everything's blurred. Just get me the gun. 
Jake handles this. Uh, come back in half an hour. Yeah? Do I get the gun or do I come over the counter after you? And don't reach under there. Maybe it's in the safe. I'll see. So will I. Oh, I forgot. Jake's got the combination. Quit stalling. I'm not. No? No, no getting tough. I tell you, I haven't got it. Of course you haven't. Who'd you sell it to? I can't remember. What'd you do with that gun? Come on, tell me. You. He's out. You hear me? Wake up. Come on. There's somebody outside. Quick, give me something to gag him with. What can I do for you? Well, I'd like to see something in revolvers. Anything special? Yes. A police special 45. I'm, uh, I'm afraid we haven't any of those in stock. Well, the district attorney has. Really? So the papers say. What have you got in bags? Bags? Yes, with money and jewelry in them. Come on, get wise, Doyle. Maybe the district attorney has that, too. Oh, that's just too bad. Get over there. We're going in and call on Nate. I'm giving you another headline story, Doyle. But you won't write it. Nate! Nate! All right, Doyle. I'm giving you three to tell me where that bag is. Where is it? One. Where is it? Two. Where is it? After all the nice things that have happened, now comes the earthquake. Goodness, Larry, what happened? Didn't you read it? In all the write-ups, they call you Mrs. Doyle. Is that all that's worrying you? Is that all? Well, we're not married. No. But don't you understand? Now you'll have to marry me. 